there have been some pretty massive improvements in terms of AI face animation or you know AI character acting. The most impressive one is called Live Portrait. We did look at that a few videos ago, though at the time you could only animate still images. But we did see it was possible to do video to video as Stealthy the Time Traveler essentially ended up hacking the code and unlocking that feature. A lot of people were having problems getting that version running, you know, obviously because it was an unofficial workaround, but in good news, the feature has been officially implemented and you can start using it now for free. So today we're gonna go through a full run through of Live Portrait's video to video, where it really shines, what its limitations are, and some ideas on how you can improve your final output. Okay, let's dive in. So the thing that Live Portrait's video to video really solves is those kind of like bobblehead, static AI avatar characters. Because we can now drive our AI generated video with video references, uh, it really allows for a level of personalization and humanization. Now I'll say the overall technique here is not necessarily new. I mean, at the end of the day, really what we're talking about is motion and performance capture. The difference of course being here is that you don't need to have a bunch of dots painted to your face and you don't have to have a super expensive and likely heavy camera rig attached to your face. In fact, all you need is a webcam. Now this mostly works the same way as it does with static images. Uh, you know, obviously the biggest thing that you'll wanna do is come up to this tab that says source video and obviously click on that. Now you can upload video in any aspect ratio that you want. Obviously you want to be looking for something with a very clear shot of the character's face though. Since the other day I had some fun utilizing a scene of Al Pacino in Heat and ended up with this. You guys ever see this movie Heat? It's pretty good. A, that is a terrible Al Pacino impersonation. B, I really should have put a hua at the end of it. I thought it would nicely bookmark by using a De Niro scene. So I grabbed a clip of the coffee house sequence. Um, we're just gonna drag it into here. Now the aspect ratio here is two one. So you're definitely gonna wanna make sure you have this do crop uh, check marked. So that's going to, you know, essentially find De Niro's face. In this section, we will have our driving video. You can either upload a video reference for it or actually even use your webcam. We'll get into that in just one second. For now, I'm just going to use one of the examples. Uh, this guy is checking to see if he has a jaw disorder. And from there, all we really have to do is hit the animate button. And after a few moments, we have this piece of silliness. Yes, uh, my apologies to one of my favorite actors. Now, to be honest, I'm not that interested in, you know, taking famous movie scenes and overdubbing them. Although I do see a potential use case as this technology evolves to become, you know, the new version of ADR. But what I am interested in is being able to use this technology for our own AI generated films. For example, taking this mid-journey generated image of a character in an interrogation scene, and yes, I do realize he looks like Jason Statham, which somewhat negates everything that I said earlier. This is just an example, though. Running it through Luma's Dream Factory with the prompt man talking, we get, you know, this, which looks pretty good. There's mouth movement, but he's not really saying anything. So taking that and bringing it into live portrait, what we can do now is actually drive the video via a webcam. So to do that, we'll just come down to this little icon here, click that, and then you'll get, you know, a notification to click to access webcam. From here, you'll obviously be able to record your performance. Just click the little red icon right there, the record button and hit stop when it's time to stop. Uh, we'll do that for a quick second here. Sorry, I don't know where to look. There's so many screens. Um, so I'm gonna stop the recording. Uh, to note, you do not have to click the do crop button uh, down here because we're recording via webcam. So it is automatically one-to-one. -one. Now, one little quality of life feature that I discovered when recording your driving video is that record button and the stop button are kind of small and your mouse might drift a little. Uh, if you do need to trim, you can just come down to these little scissors right here and uh, yeah, you can actually trim your driving video a bit. It's pretty nice. So let's record a quick performance for our guy. Doesn't it look like I'm a character with a British accent? Now to note, we do definitely end up with some instability in around the forehead. It kind of looks like, you know, our guy is having a massive migraine. Additionally, there is definitely something off in the head movement here. Uh, one way of toning that down though, is by running him through Kriya's Creative AI Video Upscaler. Uh, yeah, this does some pretty interesting stuff. So you'll note though that it definitely does kind of smooth out the head movement a little bit. That said, it does also add sort of like this HDR-ness to it. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to play around with these strength and resemblance sliders quite a bit to find something that suits you. 
Obviously from here, you can head over to Eleven Labs speech to speech so that you end up with something like this. Doesn't it look like I'm a character with a British accent? Now, I should have spoken in a faux British accent in order to get the output of a British accent, but hey, whatever. I'm not winning any Oscars here. Now, here's a limitation, or at least something that you'll have to figure out a workaround on. Uh, taking this Luma shot and then running it through Live Portrait, uh, we end up with this. You know, obviously, the problem here is that the driving video doesn't pick up until about midway through. I think given the fact that these guys on the side are like kind of like wigging out really bad, uh, I think that Live Portrait just didn't know where to put its focus. So if you do run into a situation like that, one idea that you can possibly try out is to take your input video and then change your dimensions to 512 by 512 or 1 1 uh, and then run this. We run her through in our 1 1 crop and from there simply add a mask on top of her. Uh, the mask looks like this. So we're just cutting out sort of a circle around her. Again, I didn't do the greatest job with masking. I could have feathered that out a lot better, but uh, you know, for the purposes of our example, it works here. All of that masking does sound like a bit of a hassle. I totally understand that. Uh, I do think that the solve for that will come from uh, this source crop scale with the X and Y axes. That said, I did not run across any documentation in terms of how to utilize this. So hopefully that will be coming along shortly. So another thing to be aware of, and I don't wanna necessarily call this a limitation. This is, you know, like anything visual, more light equals better. But obviously in Dead Sea, my AI generated short film that I released last week, uh, I did note that probably the weakest aspect of it was lip sync. So naturally I had to give old Captain Renfield the live portrait treat and well, we ended up with this. Well, this would have been very handy to have during my pirate movie. So obviously some decoherence issues here and there, but obviously this is much better than my previous method of, you know, generating a bunch of video of him talking and then just kind of cutting up the audio to try to match lip flap. So I did have the idea of like really boosting up the exposure on the footage and then trying to rerun that. My pirate movie definitely could have used this. Perfect? No, but then taking everything back over to Premiere and then just kind of playing around with some color correction and then adding in our Pirate 11 Labs voice, we ended up with this. My pirate movie definitely could have used this. Which definitely looks a lot better than the original version. But I do think that showcases how fast everything is moving and just in the course of a week, well, everything just changed. Can't get mad at me, I have not used that as a video title in quite some time. Now in terms of using Live Portrait, there are a couple of different ways to go. Obviously, since it is open source, the code is available if you are knowledgeable with installations, but probably the easiest way to get started is by utilizing Pinocchio. I have covered Pinocchio in the past. I do think it's a great platform. They just updated to a 2.0 model as well. Uh, just head over to Pinocchio.computer, hit the download button, and you'll be able to install it either on a Windows, a Mac, or a Linux machine. To note, and I know that sometimes people get uncomfortable about this, but you do have to bypass Windows security in order to install install it on a Windows machine. And on the Mac side, you'll actually have to run a patch command that will open up a terminal window, um, essentially to allow Pinocchio to install. Now I've been using Pinocchio for quite some time now. I've had no you know, security issues. There is a very large community of other Pinocchio users as well. That said, if you are concerned about bypassing your machine's security settings, uh, stay tuned. I do have an alternate method for you coming up in just a second. But basically once you have Pinocchio installed, all you have to do is come up and hit the live portrait button here uh, and then hit download. Once it's finished downloading, on this side you should have a button that says install. I obviously have it installed already so I can't reinstall it, uh, but once it's done you just hit the open web UI button and yeah, you are up and running. There's also a ton of other open source projects that you can download on Pinocchio including Comfy UI, Stable Audio, um, AI Town which is a favorite of mine as well. Now again, if you are uncomfortable for any reason downloading Pinocchio, uh, you can also try out live portrait video to video via Hugging Space. That link is down below. Alternatively, if you just want to wait a little while, given the fact that live portrait is open source, I can almost guarantee you that some version of it will appear in all of the video generation platforms very soon. Finally, I'm gonna round out by saying just, just use it responsibly. There was a video I was going to do a while back when the new Indiana Jones game came out in which I was going to, you know, face swap Harrison Ford's face onto the character model and, you know, redo his voice with an AI model as well. 
I backed down from doing that video basically because I kind of felt that it would be disrespectful to uh, Troy Baker, the actor that played Indiana Jones in the game version. And then I saw that last Indiana Jones movie, at least, oh God, I hope it's the last one. Uh, and, you know, I think the world was kind of tired of seeing Harrison Ford face swapped. And at the end of the day, while yes, it can be done, do we really want to do this? I and mean, can't I just rest? Yes, let's just let that poor man rest and concentrate instead on making new characters and new stories with this technology. I thank you so much for watching. My name is Tim.